Welcome to Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Beauchamp, your host of our show called Crossing Bridges, where we talk about how we started from where we were and crossed the bridge to get to where we are. My company is called The Champ Group, and I am an executive director on the John Maxwell team. I'm so excited to introduce you to our special guest today, friend of mine, Diana Jennings, owner of Diana Jennings, which is an amazing branding company, not just branding, but personal branding. And so Diana, welcome. Hi, Hi I'm Diana. so glad to be here with you. I'm so happy too. <laughs> Thank you for saying yes. Sure, it's my pleasure. Honestly, so here's what we're gonna start talking about, Diana, because like I said, it's not just branding, it is branding, but it's personal branding. What, what is personal branding? Is it image? Tell us more about what it is. Let's start with that. Okay, so first of all, our image, your image is just one way that you represent your brand. It's the visual representation of your brand and one way that it's communicated. Personal branding, mm -hmm. it's actually a process. Okay. Okay, so personal branding is the process that one goes through to manage the perception and the experience that others have when they interact with them. Okay. okay, so perceptions. So there's perceptions, but for personal branding is the actual process. But then there's your personal brand. Oh, okay. Okay, and your personal brand is the actual, it's the sum of your experience, your education, mm. it's what you do, it's how you do it, it's your verbal, it's your nonverbal mm. communication, mm -hmm. and your physical appearance. So it's everything that represents you. That is your personal brand. Okay, and that's kind of scary because what you're saying is that people are making decisions about us. I actually read something interesting that said in the first four seconds, people make decisions about us. So that means how we're being, like you said, our nonverbal, what we're saying, how we're looking. That is kind of scary because people make decisions fast, right? We, we live in a digital world right. and people are forced to make decisions in, in nanoseconds yeah. because we've got all this information coming at us. Right. And we never know that when we're interacting with someone, if <coughs> something we do, say, act, anything, if it's going to resonate with them in a certain way because of their experience, their mm -hmm. background, mm -hmm. their own education. Right, and right, so, right, right. That's why it's important that we be purposeful with what we want, with what we communicate, so that we're not, it's not communication by chance. Oh, oh, that's big, by chance. So in other words, we need to be very intentional. Absolutely. Okay, so our audience who's watching, they're gonna wanna know. So what are we talking about when we're talking intentional, perceptions, image, personal brand? Let's talk about dress code. And, okay. Okay. <laughs> in the workplace, dress code. And I recently was teaching a class a couple weeks ago, and the subject came up. What happened? When did we become so casual? Casual. And, right. So let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that I was back in back in the day when it all started. I was in the middle of it. Okay. All right. I worked in Silicon Valley. Okay. All right. This was back in the day before the internet. Engineers and programmers, they literally worked and lived on site 24 7 to meet oh, deadlines. Right, right, right. All right. So, out of necessity, mm -hmm. they wore jeans and tees to be comfortable because they, they took catnaps in the cots in okay. their cubicles. Right. Okay. And so, <laughs> it wasn't long before uh, the front office folk would say, okay, uh, they're wearing jeans and t-shirts, why can't we? Okay. So that's, you know, we talk about or we hear about Silicon Valley being the birthplace of business casual. Mm -hmm. That's that's why it started. Interesting. Jeans and tees. Jeans and tees. But 40 years ago or so, it wasn't business casual, it was business relaxed. And oh, it was okay. an opportunity to give men and women uh, a day, usually Fridays, right. to just step it down a couple notches. What did that mean for women? It meant instead of wearing pumps and skirt, skirted suits, they wore pantsuits and, and loafers, okay? Mm -hmm. For guys, instead of wearing a suit with a tie, they'd wear a sports coat with or without a tie. It was relaxed. 
And if we look up the word casual in mm -hmm. the dictionary, oh, okay. it means without thought. It means oh. temporary. Oh. So if HR professionals, whoever writes the dress code for a company, if they were to write it with the thought of what casual means, they would revamp their dress code. Yeah, and, interesting. Yeah, and also professionals would most likely dress a little differently as well because who wants to be perceived as being temporary without thought? Uh, right, that's not a good look. No. That doesn't, that's not a good look, literally. And so what you made me think about is when I used to work for a company, honestly, to be quite honest, it used to really bother me how casual people would come to work. I mean, it almost looked like they barely got out of their PJs. Right. And you know what, and I also attribute that to fashion designers. I blame the fashion industry for oh, that. Oh really? In what way? I do, because you know, they're business people, so of course they need to create new collections from season to season. Uh -huh, they right. need to keep their clients right. interested and buying. They're running a business, all right. But what happened was that the designs that they were creating were defining the message that professional women were sending about themselves. Okay, so let's Never talk one. a little bit more about that. Okay. Because you said women send different messages than men do in the attire, and I found that to be intriguing and so true. So talk more about that. Okay. So my aha moment okay. when, when I realized this was about maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. I was at a women's conference and heard Carly Fiorina uh -huh. speak. Uh -huh. Okay. And since then, I've heard multiple executive men say this exact same thing. And what was said to me was women lack the presumption of competence. Say that again. Women lack the presumption of competence. Mm, that's a strong statement. And 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 the predominantly women female audience just kind of gasped. Okay. And uh, that's Carly, our audience right now. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> sure. And so Carly Fiorina went on to say that a man would be promoted into a position, and maybe six months to a year later, people that put him there would be scratching their head, thinking, "Oh, maybe." Hmm. He wasn't the right choice. Maybe he wasn't as ready as we thought. Hmm. Where a woman, it will take the powers it be six months to a year longer to promote a woman. Hmm. So I walked away from that conference. That's, that's disappointing. Yeah. yeah, I walked away from that conference wondering, okay, why is that? Uh -huh. And then being in being an image consultant, it dawned on me: men are consistent in the message that they communicate. Okay. Really? So, so if you think about attire, if you think about a man's clothing and what he wears day in and day out, right? Okay, nothing much changes when it comes to the line, mm. the texture, the fabric, the pattern size. It's very consistent. Therefore, he sends a consistent message. That's true. Okay, that's very true. Women, on the other hand, are going to change the lines, the color, the texture, the shape. Everything about their wardrobe based on weight gain, weight loss. Right, we know about that. What designers are saying oh, they need to be wearing. Okay. What the store clerk says looks good on them. Mm. The mood, what they have going on after work, what their work day is. And so with every change in the look, she's changing the message about her. So in a week, she could be sending five different messages where a man in a week can be sending the same message. And because of that, so let's talk, let's connect that. Because of that, the message that the woman is sending, people might not be sure about how to interpret back to perception. Exactly. What she's, what she's conveying to us, whereas with the men, they are, so that makes them more promotable. Well, it, there's a security in the decision to promote. You know what you're getting when you see with the man, because it goes, wow. Yes. That is really, now I don't know if our audience is having aha moments right now, but I am because mm -hmm. think, you're right. Depending on what you have going on in the evening, then you might decide to wear something a little more fancy. Then it might be a day where you just didn't feel like getting dressed up, so you wore leggings to work. Right. And then another day you wore jeans with a different kind of top, so it's inconsistent. I find that to be really intriguing. Yeah. That, that's interesting. And when women recognize that because of that, it's holding us back from getting a promotion that we could be more qualified for because you said 
Six months later, they're wondering, hmm, we thought because of consistent messaging that this person was gonna be ready, but it doesn't really seem like the work quality is matching what the message was conveying. That That's very interesting. And on top of that is, and, and it's documented, we've heard it, right. that men will apply for a promotion. Oh. He'll have the self-confidence. He'll just go out there whether or not he really believes he's ready or not. He's just gonna go for it. Right. Where a woman needs to feel credible, knowledgeable, that she's got the background, she's got this, mm -hmm. and secure in herself before she will step out of her comfort zone. And you know what, Diana, last week at the same class when we were talking about the dress code and what happened, one lady there said, I wanted to apply for a position and I didn't have all the qualifications. I didn't feel like I had been in my current position long enough, so I didn't apply. So that is exactly what happened. And we discussed, men would have said, well, I have these seven out of 10, so I'm going for it. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll, I'll figure, figure it out. out. Okay, so that, that so women, we need to have the confidence and we need to dress to show that we have the confidence. That's right. That's, that's an interesting discussion, Diana. In terms of the casualness, this I could be wrong, but I have a perception okay. that in, in California, where we are, because there might be some people watching in other states, but in California, it seems, it feels like everyone is super casual. So I'm kind of feeling like that's California. And it, my perception is that on the East Coast, they dress up more. But I could be wrong. What, what's your experience with that? It's regional. It's regional okay. and it's based on industry. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I have, my, my children are millennials and they, <laughs> and I have a daughter who lives in New York City and she's in the advertising PR. It's a very casual work environment. If they're meeting with clients, they may get a little bit more dressed up, okay. or they may be a little bit more edgy. But it's really based on, on the region of the country where you are. Yes, in metropolitan areas, San Francisco, New York, Boston, people may dress up a little bit more if they're going to an office. Okay. Uh, but if, uh, you know, and then industries like banking, banking oh, and legal, people are going to dress a little more, they're gonna dress formally. Right, yeah. Now, so thank you for helping me understand that. So when we talk about crossing bridges, you and I have spent a lot of time together. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Diana and I were friends, and we did the 60 mile, 60 mile walk in, uh, for Susan Coleman breast cancer last year in San Diego. So not only did we do that, but we did a lot of training together. So we always have a lot of time. We never met on the things no, to talk about. No, we always, <laughs> always awesome. And so one of the things that you talked about to me was the messages that how we think Oh, yes. Affects how we dress. So I found that to be intriguing. Talk more, talk a little bit more about that. So we can say it one way or we can flip it. You know, um, how we dress is based on how we think. Okay. And how we think is based on how we feel. Mm. And, and how we feel affects how we act and behave, what we put out. And how, how we act and behave affects how people respond to us. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of clients that will come to me because they just need to, they want a little bit more self-confidence. They want to feel better about themselves. And the dressing mm -hmm. affects what they think about themselves. Mm -hmm. They start to feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. They start to act and behave more confidently. They're more apt to step out of their comfort zone people see this they respond more positively to mm. them and so it can it's a mm, it's a see, it can be a vicious circle either the for the positive or, oh. or negative wow and so i did a class one time too and one lady said she worked in an area an industry where you really dress casual but she did and she worked mostly with men and she did not like how the men treated her. So she started dressing up more. She started wearing pumps, nicer pants, and she found that she got more respect. Okay. So what's your thought on that? What's your thought on that? Because we want people to say, well, what kind of action can I take? Well, you know, we're, we're talking about bridging. Right. All right. And so when we dress, and if we work in a very relaxed, I try not to use the word casual. Right. But That's if, a difference. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge difference. But if we are working in a very relaxed environment, mm -hmm. okay, 
Uh, the thing is, number one is to know what message do we want to communicate about ourselves. Okay, what's okay. that message? Okay. And dress accordingly to reinforce that message. Now, of course, when we're working amongst a team and we want to be a team player, we don't want to dress so far above or differently from our peers mm -hmm. because it's going to interfere with our, our rapport building mm -hmm. with okay. the team. However, if we aspire to move up in our career, mm -hmm. we need to bridge that gap between being a team member and being recognized good point. From, by the executives that we are promotable. Mm -hmm. So finding the details in the clothing that speaks to our team. Okay. okay so for example, t jeans and t-shirts. Right, jeans okay. and t-shirts. Okay, if it's very casual, just make sure that you have, den you're wearing denim that is uh, darker wash. Okay. Uh, make sure that maybe you're wearing a collared shirt uh, and instead of athletic uh, shoes, you're wearing maybe leather sole shoes. Okay. 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 So you're bridging the gap between the two. Okay. Yes. And you mentioned earlier in the conversation that people who want to get promoted might want to work with you. So help us understand, and we'll have a couple more things to talk about, but help us understand now, who do you work with, Diana? Who is your audience? Like, when would they say, okay, so what I've learned from this is that I'm sending messages that I wasn't even aware of, and that's why I'm not getting the respect that I deserve or I got passed over for those promotions. So who do you work with? Who's your target audience? And where can people find out how to get in touch with you? Okay, so I work with entrepreneurs and career-minded women who are really interested in positioning themselves to attract more opportunities. Okay, and, okay. so and attract more opportunities. Okay, that's a good way to career say. Career advancing oh, opportunities. Career, <laughs> let's be specific. <laughs> Career advancing opportunities. opportunities. Okay. Okay. So, and I do this through the development of their personal brand and refining their image. Okay. And uh, they can find me on my website, www.dianajennings.com. Okay. So, www.dianajennings with an S at the end, dot com. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's cross the bridge again. We talked okay. about what not to wear. Help us understand what should we wear? Like, what's a, what, are, what are our guidelines? I know you said like structure. <coughs> You mentioned a couple minutes ago, collared shirt. So what, what should we wear? Because it's interesting to me. You talk about fabric. Help us understand when we're really crossing that bridge and we're ready for that advancement opportunity. Well, I think the biggest key is to understand that there's a hierarchy to okay. everything, okay. from formal to least formal, from formal to approachable to playful, okay? And so that's in color, in fabric, in texture. Okay. And so the bottom line is, is that we first of all need to really define what the message is that we want to communicate about ourselves. Okay. And then reinforce that not only through the overall outfit, but through the visual details. Mm. Because it's those visual details that are going to help us create a visual authority. So what colors? What you said colors. So what, what colors communicate what message? You know, at one time it was black or charcoal, navy, khaki, tan, you know, camel color, you know, but really colors that are duller mm -hmm. and darker okay. of any shade of the color wheel. Oh, uh, okay. Duller and darker, you know, would be considered more business appropriate. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, that's good to know. And what about patterns? The smaller, well, I should say, the larger the pattern, the more casual the, okay. uh, the look. The smaller and tighter the pattern, the more formal it can be. Okay, all right. So then it's just a matter of balancing out what's the dominant message that you want to send because we all have multiple uh, personas, you know, when right. it comes to style, right. you know, and so, uh, you know, we want to accentuate our creativity or our femininity, mm -hmm. uh, but in a business environment, you want to make sure that the dominant message is professional and then accent it with elements of a little femininity or a little creativity or a dr drama. Okay, okay, so when you're going to work and you have an after five event, then it's the accents that you can put with it 
and uh, size the pattern depending on what the event is. That's right. Okay. And you can also, you dress in a basic outfit for the office, and then in the evening, you change up the shoes and the accessories okay. and the lip color, for, and then you're good to go. Okay, okay. She makes it sound so simple. <laughs> <laughs> and and you just mentioned, what so accessories. Eyewear, purses, jewelry. Do you have a couple pointers for us on that before we wrap up? They all have a style. Okay. And all the different styles, There's, and we don't have time to go into it right now, but there are seven core styles. Oh, and each of those styles send a different message. Oh, wow. Either, you know, you're, you're a little bit more sporty, you're a little bit more romantic, you're, you're a little uh, more traditional or, or sophisticated, you know. And so all of the styles send uh, a message, but also your hairstyles can send a message, your eyewear. So we just want to balance it out. Okay. We just want to balance out, look at all the elements of dress and, and balance out the message. Okay. And don't send mixed messages. Okay. Right. All right. Wow. So we need to have you come back so we can learn more about to. those seven <laughs> styles. But wow, that's a lot. There's a lot to it. I always admired what you do and now I even have more respect for it. Thank you. You have a lot of information on it. So I want to thank you, Diana. What's your next bridge to cross? You have a book. I have a book that I'm writing yes. right now. And so, you know, I've worked with uh, men and women to develop their brand and, uh, like I said, refine their image. But the one impression that's most important is the impression that we have of ourselves. Mm. All right. And the, so the book is about the self image. Okay. And the self image is that mental picture that we have of ourselves. And if it's healthy, it's going to help us succeed. If it's not, it's what's going to hold us back. Okay, so self-image. Okay, wow, so I'm excited about that book. Thank you. Oh, yeah, wow. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited about that book. Okay, so Diana, I think, guess we're out of time. I want to thank you so much again for saying yes and for being our leading lady today. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. And thank you, audience, for tuning in to us, and we will see you next time on Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence.